Good evening, my Bethel family. God bless you. God bless you to all of you that have joined us this evening for Bible study. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, as they say, come on in the room. Come on in the room and please like and share. Please like and share. We are honored to be with you all this evening. Always honored uh, when we are able to share in the word of the Lord. We give honor to our pastor, uh, Bishop Dickerson Ellis Wells. I bring you greeting live from the sanctuary, live from the sanctuary of our Memphis campus, which is located in the Fraser community of Memphis, Tennessee, 2216 Clifton Avenue. We are one church ministering in two locations, and uh, our Mumford location is located in the heart of downtown Mumford. So we thank and praise God for each of you that have joined us tonight for Bible study. It is our endeavor not to be before you long. Uh, that is our endeavor. Uh, but we are going to the word of the Lord uh, that is found in the book of Hebrews. We're going to uh, deal with Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And we are going to deal uh, we're going to begin reading at the 19th verse, Hebrews, uh, the 10th chapter, uh, begin, beginning reading at the 19th verse. And I see the saints coming on in. We thank God for our first lady on today, Lady Wells, and to Missionary Bolden, uh, Missionary Milton. God bless each and every one of you all. Please come on in. Please comment and engage. I'm going to try. I can't make no promises, but I'm going to try to watch the chat on tonight. Uh, so if you have any questions or 
um, comments that I can uh, address. So please, I'm going to try. I ain't going to make no promises, but I am going to try. I see Missionary Ratliff and Elder Dunn. I also want to thank God for the King of Glory Church, the King of Glory Church uh, that is uh, also pastored by Bishop Wells, and they are joining us this evening as well. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and God, we praise you for this time and this opportunity that you've afforded us to go and to die and to learn from your word. God, we thank you because in your word is life. And so, Lord, we pray, God, that you would take us into your word and you give us life. Open up our understanding that we may learn of you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, our desire and our heart's desire is to be pleasing in your eyesight tonight, God. So, Lord, we pray, God, that you would help us. God, help us tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Those that shall listen to this Bible study, let something that is said and something that is shared let it be a blessing to their lives, a blessing to their homes, God. And God will praise you and God will give your name glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen and amen. Let's get into the word of the Lord again. Uh, it's Bible study, so I hope you have your Bibles, whether you have a physical Bible or a a um a, a device. I hope you have your Bibles. I hope you have brought your Bibles to Bible study. We're going to Hebrews, uh, the 10th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the 19th verse. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest of, into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies wash with pure water. Let us hold fast, get a good grip. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Please excuse me, that was my alarm. And let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful. Oh, that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love, unto good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We'll stop there, and if time permits, we'll go a little further down. But I want to put emphasis on that 20, mm, 23rd verse. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. The book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, Prevents, uh, presents rather a very important challenge that we need to hear tonight. Um, this challenge is uh, a command identified by let us. Who is the us? The us statement teaches us what the faithful need to do. What is the faith for those that are walking this walk, those that are talking this talk? He leaves us with some instruction. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. The writer of Hebrews is writing to a Jewish community. He's writing to a Jewish community uh, that is trying to, uh, what do you say, how do you say, they're trying to hold on to their Jewish traditions and their Jewish roots 
as well as hold on to their new and grab hold to their new Christian faith or their newfound faith in Jesus. So they're trying in an attempt to do both. They're trying to bring in their Jewish heritage, their Jewish customs, their Jewish faith, their Jewish, um, uh, uh, their Jewish roots, if you will, their Jewish law. They're trying to hold on to that that they had in their old faith, and they're trying to marry, and they're trying to merge that with their new found faith in Jesus. What do we, how do we apply that to our lives um, today? We apply that to our lives today because some of us are trying to hold on. God has brought us out of the world and brought us into this marvelous light. Yeah, he has given us his great salvation. But many of us are trying to hold on to our secular life, uh, the life that God has called us out of darkness. And we are trying to hold on to that and bring that into holiness, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, uh, I guess I'll say it. I guess I'll say it. Uh, uh, you know, now it's something that is in the news and it's on social media. Uh, we have, uh, gospel artists trying to marry and merge that that's in the world into and bring it into the church. Uh, but somebody has got to stand firm. Okay? Somebody has got to stand firm on holiness. You can't do both. What does the word say? Let's go back up to 19. What does the word say? The word said, having therefore brothering boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. What is he saying? He's telling the Jewish uh, uh, converts, these new Jewish converts, that we have the ability, we have uh, uh, the, the access to come boldness to enter into the holiest. When they say the holiest, um, you've got to remember that in the Old Testament and under the Old Covenant, that only certain people were allowed to go into the holies of holies. Everyone could not enter into the holiest of holies. Only the high priest, only those that had been consecrated, okay, could enter into the holiest of, or the holy of holiest. And not only that, but those that entered in, it was only the high priest. But if that high priest was not holy, when he went in uh, as a safety measure, they would tie a rope around his waist. And when he would go in to the holies of holies, if he was not holy, if he was not consecrated, uh, he would fall dead. Okay, He would fall dead and that rope was tied to him. So that they could pull him out. Okay. So the writer of Hebrews says. Because of Jesus. We have the ability. That we don't have to go into the holy. Of holy scared. But we can come boldly. Thank God for Jesus. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. We can come boldly. Into the holies of holy. By the new and living way. This is a new way. This isn't the old way, but this is a new way, which had consecrated, which he had consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. He has 
consecrated this way. He has set this way apart for us by his own flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let, what does it say? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. There goes that faith word in a full assurance of faith. You don't have anything to doubt, but you can come with full assurance, full confidence of faith. Having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse number three, 23. Let's get back to where we started. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. There are so many that are wavering in this day. There's so many that are deviating. That word wavering is a word that comes deviating. Let's not deviate from the faith um, uh, that we receive. Um, this latter part of chapter 10, we find uh, this challenges us in the form of a fourfold exhortation. Point number one, it says, approach the throne of God. Christ's sacrifice allows us to boldly petition God's throne. Point number two, it advances the people of God. Believers are to be kind and helpful. Uh, I'm not there yet. I'm sorry. And helpful to each other. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. God that made the promise, you see them? He is faithful that promise. All the promises in God are yes and amen. We serve a faithful God. Yeah, we serve a God that you can put your faith in, and he is faithful. Verse number 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. This is where I'm going. Advance the people of God. Believers are to be kind and helpful to one another. Let us consider one another. Consider your neighbor, consider your brother, consider your sister, and provoke unto love and to good works. Encourage your neighbor. We should not be encouraging, number one, foolishness. We should not be encouraging ungodly behavior. We should not be encouraging. I'm going to go back and, 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 and. Uh, back to this thing that's in the news, but somebody and many people, you got people on both ends of the spectrum. But we as believers should be encouraging people to love and provoking people to good works. And if you, when I tell you, um, there's a new song out by Beyonce and uh, I haven't listened to the song. Um, I have heard and um, partially, I should say, read some of the lyrics because I tell you the lyrics are so vulgar and so ungodly uh, that um, you don't even want to listen to them. And you definitely don't need to read them. And um, it's definitely not for any sanctified person or any person that is uh, proclaiming faith, there goes that word, faith in Jesus Christ and professing their salvation and their hope in Jesus Christ is nothing that we uh, should be listening to. Uh, but the dilemma is that on the song you have uh, where they have sampled some gospel music and they have overlaid it with lyrics that um, encourage ungodly behavior, 
ungodly conduct. And we as believers should not encourage such behavior. Somebody ought to be able to say that's wrong. Somebody ought to be able to say that's ungodly. It's ungodly to do and to even mention some things uh, Paul said should not even be named amongst the saints. Something, matter of fact, some of the stuff that we're doing, Paul says the heathen won't do. Can't hear nobody talking back to me. Uh, and so, um, um, and so we are to encourage and provoke unto love and to good works. Uh, let's skip down. Because there is judgment. Oh, yeah. Uh, the writer of Hebrews, it doesn't leave us there, but he moves on. Let's come on down to verse 26. And before long, I'll be able to touch on uh, one of my favorite scriptures in the book. Verse number 26 says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment Suppose ye shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that have said vengeance belong it to me. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. What is the rod of Hebrews telling us? What is he sharing with us? He moves from the approaching the throne of God, the advance of the people of God, and he moves into avoiding the judgment of God. And he contrasts two things. Throughout the whole book of Hebrews, you have a compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. He compares the old covenant to the new covenant. He compares, I mean, throughout the whole book of Hebrews, it's really a compare and contrast. So right here, he gives us, the writer gives us another compare and contrast. What do we see? We see the compare and contrast between a, a reminder of how God once punished those who rejected the law of Moses. You see that right here. He says that those that rejected the law of Moses, those that rejected them, they fall into a fiery indignation. Okay, so you see that those that rejected what Moses told them to do. God destroyed them in the wilderness. They never made it to the promised land. Okay, verse number 29, it says this, Oh, how much sore, how much greater, how much worse is going to be the punishment of those that reject Jesus. Those that rejected Moses, uh, they were punished. But how much more of those of us that have and live in this dispensation and have the opportunity to accept Jesus and accept his holiness and his sanctification and his new covenant, how much more? Oh, he gives a, a sharp warning. He gives a sharp warning. And I tell you, God is warning the church on every hand. God is warning, warning after warning. What does the Bible say? Warning comes before destruction. And God is constantly warning the church, warning his people, get it together. Get it right. Get it together. 
It won't be long, I tell you. It won't be long. It won't be long uh, before God returns. It won't be long. The signs, the days, the signs are there. Any day now, any day now, God can uh, uh, crack that sky. Any day now, and if he doesn't crack the sky, if he doesn't have and call the saints up in the uh, in the rapture, uh, any day now could be your day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I used to hear uh, uh, folks say, every day you sick enough to die. People are getting out of here and you don't have to even be sick to die. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be in the hospital. You don't have to have any pre-existing conditions. Right now, tomorrow is not promised. So he gives us a reminder of how God once punished those who rejected the law of Moses. And he also gives us a reminder of how God will punish those who reject the Lamb of God. We are assured, we are assured God will judge his people. What does that say in verse number 30? For we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. That's what we don't want to do, saints. We want to get it right now. We want to live a life that is pleasing to God now. It is no time to waver in our faith. It is no time to, 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 to take down the standard. It is no time. No, 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 no. It's time to hold on like never before. Don't, don't waver now. Don't give up now. Let's go back up with this verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. It's not time to waver. Yeah. Let's come on down to verse uh, 32. I love this verse. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great of affliction. So now he then tells us, let's call back. Let's call back to our remembrance. Let's think on yesterday. Let's think on yesteryear. Let's think about where we've come from. Not only is he writing to a Jewish community uh, that is trying to hold on to their of the roots in their customs, and he is uh, 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 encouraging them to hold on to their faith, but he's also writing to a persecuted church. Hmm. <coughs> he's writing to a church, he's writing to a church that is a persecuted church um he's writing to a church uh that is a persecuted church and remember the early church is a church that is being persecuted for their faith and when you are being persecuted for your faith or for whatever you're being persecuted for, you always have the temptation to give up. You have the temptation to say, is it worth it? You have the temptation to say, um, uh, I don't have to go through all this. I'll just give up. You always have 
the temptation there to um to throw in the towel. And so the writer of Hebrews says, now, those of you that are tempted to give up, those of you that are tempted to throw in the towel, those of you that are tempted to go back, and saying that this is too hard, it's too much, uh, living for God, I've got to go through too many tests and too many trials, I have to go through too much, oh, there's a war going on, uh, um, believe it or not, people are going through, people, uh, many of us wear a smile, but you would be surprised what we're going through, what we are smiling through, you would be surprised what we are dancing through, what we are praising God through. Every day is not Sunday. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 can I get a witness? Every day is not a mountain top experience. Every day is not a glorious day. Uh, so many of us are dancing and shouting through pain and shouting through persecution, shouting through hurt, shouting and praising God. And we are tempted. Uh, and if we're not tempted, don't fool yourself. The devil will have thoughts in your mind. Your own flesh will begin to talk to you just like uh, 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 Job's wife talked to him. Uh, if we're honest with ourselves, your mind tells you the same thing. Sometimes it ain't worth it. Why don't you just curse God and die? Uh, uh, God don't have to allow you to go through all of that. And so the writer of Hebrews says, now, after you come out of that, and sometimes you have to talk yourself out of that. He says, stop right there in your tracks. He says, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, this is after you got saved, after you came into the knowledge of Christ, after you uh, made your profession in Christ, you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. Ah, uh, yeah, this isn't your first battle. He says, you know, the devil wants you to focus on right now. The enemy wants you to focus on right now. Um, and he doesn't want you to reflect backwards, and he doesn't want you to see the big picture going forward. He wants to keep you trapped in right now. But you've got to come up and take an eagle eye view. He says we'll mount up with wings as eagles. We'll soar like eagles. Sometimes you have to take an eagle eye approach and you've got to be able to see what you come out of and where you're going to. I like that. I like that you've got to be able to see what you've come out of and where you're going. But if you're not careful, the enemy will have you focused on right now. But it's really not even about right now. Mm-mm. It's not even about right now. Really, it's about where God is taking it to. But if you can reflect and think about where God has brought you from and what God has brought you out of. And so the writer says, this ain't your first battle. Good God Almighty. This ain't your first test. This ain't your first trial. This isn't your first temptation. No, no. And if God has brought you out of that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction, partly while you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while as you became uh, companions of them that were so used. Verse number 34. For ye had compassion on me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoil of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. It's not all about here. It's not all about earth. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, uh, and we really need to get, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, like I said, time won't be long. And we really got to get back to preaching heaven. 
It's not about earth. It's about heaven. Heaven is our goal. Christ is our goal. Being in the presence of God is our goal. So it says, your hope is in heaven. Your hope is in an enduring substance. That that we have here, um, that that we have here is, is temporal. It's temporal. That that we live here, our homes, our careers, our bodies, uh, they're temporal. They don't last forever. Oh, but our hope is in something that endures. Our hope is in a heaven and and in a place that we will never. We used to sing, they'll never grow old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over there, there's no dying. There's no aging. Uh, 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 that, 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 that. It's eternal. Uh, we used to have uh, a mother in my home church. She used to say, I'm living to live again. I'm living to live again. She didn't testify without saying, y'all pray for me that I, because I'm living to live again. I'm, I'm doing every day, not to stay here, but every day I'm living to be in the presence of God. I'm living to make heaven my home. Verse number 35. And we're, we're coming to a close. We're coming to a close. Uh, but I get excited at verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Yeah, because we have this hope, because we have this blessed assurance, because uh, God has is faithful that promise. It, this brings us, because of everything that we've stated up until now, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Oh, yeah, you can square your shoulders back. Anything that you're hoping and believing God for, cast not away. Therefore, your confidence. Why? Because which have a great recompense of reward. Oh, yeah, your faith. Oftentimes I pray and tell God my confidence is in you. My faith is in you, Lord. And if you can hold on to your faith, if you can hold on to your confidence without wavering, if you can hold on, it has a great recompense of reward. Why? Because he is faithful that promise. He that made you the promise. It's not because. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. You know, we would be messed up if our if our our our, 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 our reward was based on our faithfulness. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Our reward is not based on our faithfulness. Why? Because we haven't we don't deserve. Our reward is not based on our um our steadfastness. <laughs> uh, because if we were faithful. If it was based on our faithfulness, <laughs> we'd lose out. Mm-mm. 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 But it's based on the faithfulness of he that promised. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath the great recompense of reward. Verse number 36. For ye have need of patience. Oh, that's a word that we don't like, patience. That's a word that we don't like, patience. We don't have to, we don't like to wait on anything. We like instant gratification. Matter of fact, I was about a year or so ago, (laughs) I was walking down the street. And I heard God clear as day say, wait. Getting ready to get into something. And God said, wait. And I said, Lord. I knew exactly what he was talking about. But I said, Lord, why I got to (laughs) wait? Why I got to wait? Don't look like nobody else is waiting. Why I got to wait? Why I got to wait? Why why do I have to wait? Nobody wants to wait. But I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll wait. 
I wasn't happy to wait, but I said, I'll wait. And as if God didn't believe that I was going to wait on him, the next morning he had one of the church mothers uh, send me a text that said, this is your word. And it was the scripture out of Psalm that says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. Wait, I say on the Lord, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. We don't like to wait. We're in a hurry for everything. We don't want to stand in the line at the grocery store. We don't want to stand in the line at the, that, at the, at the, the, the fast food line. Matter of fact, if we have to wait too long, we'll back up and leave and be complaining. For ye have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of God. That's another issue we have. We want the promises of God before we've done his will. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Ye have need of patience. You gotta wait. That after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You got to wait, but it's only after you've done what he's told you to do. It's only after you find yourself in his will. It's only after you've let go of this worldly uh, and, and sinful environment that we're in. You've got to release that that's in the world. After you've done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. It's only after we have done what God has told us to do. We want the will of God, but don't have a yes, Lord, in our spirits. We want God to perform miracles. We want God to work wonders. We want God to give us the sky is the limit. But we don't have a yes, Lord. We don't have a uh, not my will, but thy will be done. We don't have a uh, uh, my pastor talk last week about putting our faith into action and putting our faith faith to work. We don't want to put our faith to work. We don't want to do what God has told us to do, yet we want to see the promise. It's not going to happen. You got to wait, but you've got to do his will. You have to wait, but you've got to say yes, Lord, and you've got to put the yes, Lord, into action. Yes, Lord, is your faith. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord, is our faith. Yes, Lord, I'll do your will. I'll do what you want me to do. That's how you show God your faith. You submit to his will. God, I believe you. God, I trust you. And I trust you enough to do your will. Yeah, uh, the, the, the ten lepers, uh, 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 they went to God and they showed God their faith by asking. They said, that son of David, have mercy upon us. They cried out. For mercy. That was an act of faith because they came to him because they believed that that, that, that that he could heal them. But another act of their faith, the complete and totality of their faith was saying, yes, Lord, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, as they began to do what he's told them to do, that was their faith in action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their yes, Lord, their willingness to be obedient to the will of God was a portion, was an act of their faith. And so in order to show God your faith, you've got to be obedient. You've got to be willing to give God a a yes, Lord. And a yes, Lord may require you to, 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 to come out from among them and be separate. Say if the Lord touch not the unclean thing. <laughs> ha ha ha. That's a yes, Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. Not trying to mix it and do what they do. Say what they say. Oh, help us, God. 
For ye have need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I might as well finish the chapter. I promise you I'm almost through. Verse number uh, 37. I hope you're enjoying this just as much as I am. I love the word of God. Um, verse number 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. I love it. And he will not tear in just a little while. He that shall come will come. He that promised you, he's coming. You can hold on because he's coming. You don't have to throw in the towel because he's coming. He's faithful that promised. He's coming and he will not tear. He's coming and he's going to do what he said he was going to do. He's coming. Verse number 38. Now the just shall live by faith. You say, brother preacher, brother minister, how in the world are you telling me to hold on? You're telling me uh, to put my faith and to put my confidence in God, but you don't understand I'm going through. Remember, I told you this was a persecuted church. Uh, he's writing to a church that is uh, uh, persecuted. He's writing to a church that is going through. He's writing to a church whose faith is being tested on every hand. And many of us, our faith is being tested. Yeah, yeah, our faith is being tested. What we believe God could do is being tested. Mm -hmm. What we told others that God was going to do is being put to the test. So how do we make it? How do we live while we're going through? Verse number 38 tells us. He says, now the just shall live by faith. Hmm. That's how you're going to make it. You're going to make it with your faith. That's how you're going to make it. You're going to make it on your faith. What you believe God is able to do, you're going to make it because God said it. God is faithful. God's going to do it. Every day you wake up and say, any day now. Every day you wake up with a spirit of expectation. God going to do it. Today's my day. This month is my month. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to see God do it. That's how you make it. You make it on your faith. What you believe God going to do for you. Ah, uh, any day now. Yeah, God going to do it. You wake up and you're not down in what I call loaded bars. You're not down in the dumps about it. You wake up excited. You wake up with a smile on your face. God going to do it. God going to do it. You know, uh, when they used to sing a song, my faith looks up to thee. Faith is optimistic. Faith is not pessimistic. Faith is optimistic. My faith looks up. My faith looks up in great expectation. God is going to do it. And I got a smile on my face because any day now, any day now, God is going to do what he said he was going to do. And I don't have to cry. I don't have to be depressed. I can put my confidence in God. God going to do it. God going to do it. He may not have done it yet, but he going to do it. 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 And I'm excited about it. I'm expecting him to do it. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You can't turn back. You can't give up now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Come too far. Been through too much. <laughs> Been through too much to turn back. Been through too much cry. Too many tears to throw on the, t the towel now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Been through too much. Had too much heartache and pain. If God don't do it, it can't be done. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What am I go back to? What am I go back to? Jesus asked the disciples, are you going to go back with the rest of them? Peter said, Master, if we go back, we don't have nothing to go back to. We can't go back. What am I go back to? Don't have nothing. All that I have is in you, Lord. Verse number 39, and we'll conclude with this. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, 
but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not of them that draw back. We're not of them that go back into sin. We're not of them that throw in their faith and throw in their time. We're not of them. We're not of them. We're not of them. We're not of them. I want you to hold on. I want you to hold on to your faith. I want you to hold on to your profession. What you're believing God for. What you believe about God. I want you to hold on to it. I want you to hold on to your legacy of faith. I want you to hold on. I want you to hold on. I want you to hold on to your, I don't care, how do I say this? I don't care who lets down the faith. I don't care who lets down the standard. I want you to hold on to it. God does have a standard. There is a standard of holiness. There is a standard. There is sanctification. And you hold on to that profession. I don't care who's turning back. I don't care who says it's okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't care what they do. I don't care. I'm going to hold on to my profession. Don't give in to peer pressure. Peer pressure is a real thing. Don't give in to it. The pressures of the world to be like the world, to, to dress like the world, to live like the world. And believe it or not, it's coming to the church. But we as the church and the body of Christ have got to hold on to it. I'm going to let you go. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Again, we give honor to our pastor and our leader, Bishop Wells. Thank you again for this opportunity to share. And I want those of you that are watching and that share watch this live uh, broadcast, I want you to consider sowing into the ministry of Bethel Church of God in Christ. I want you to consider sowing. And before you now, you shall see, you should see uh, the giving opportunities before you now uh, for Bethel Church of God in Christ. If you'd like to sow into our ministry, you can mail a check or money order to one of two of our P.O. boxes, P.O. Box 27040, Memphis, Tennessee, 38167. Or P.O. Box 1200, Munford, Tennessee, 385. I'm sorry, 38058. If you're like me and it's more convenient for you to give the uh, or give electronically, we have three ways that you can give electronically. You can give via Cash App. Uh, you can give via Cash App that is dollar sign Bethel one, the letter N, the number two. Again, that's dollar sign Bethel one the letter N2. You can also find us on Givelify. Bethel Church Memphis Campus or Bethel Church Munford Campus. And you can visit our website, www.kojikbethel.org. www.kojikbethel.org. I would also like to encourage, encourage King of Glory. King of Glory, if you're watching tonight, please sow, please sow. Uh, please sow into the ministry there at King of Glory. Again, thank you. Thank you for worshiping and joining us tonight. I would like to finally encourage you to join us in person. Join us in person at one of our locations. Uh, our Memphis location is located here in Memphis, Tennessee, 2216 Clifton Avenue. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. here at our Memphis campus, and our worship celebration starts at 10 a.m. if you're in the Memphis area. If you're in the Mumford area, we invite you to join us at our Mumford campus that's in the heart of downtown Mumford, Tennessee. And uh, you can join us there at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. So please, please uh, consider worshiping with us in person. The doors of the church are open. So please, uh, we are still observing our COVID 
measures so you can feel free to come and wear your mask. Uh, it is safe. The doors of the church are open, so we invite you on behalf of our pastor and the entire Bethel family to come join us at one of our worship services. Thank you, and God bless you.